Section 1. Listening Comprehension. In this section of the test, you will have an opportunity to demonstrate your ability to understand conversations and talks in English. There are three parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Answer all the questions on the basis of what is stated or implied by the speakers you hear. Do not take notes or write in your test book at any time. Do not turn the pages until you are told to do so. Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Go on to Part A. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number one. I thought Mike and Francie were getting married in June. No, that's when his cousin's wedding is. They're getting married the following month. When does the woman say Mike and Francie are getting married? Number two. Did you hear that the Chapmans sold their house and are moving to Arizona? Yes, and the man who bought the house is a doctor from Philadelphia. According to the speakers, from where will the new owner come? Number three. My computer won't boot up this morning. Good thing you backed up your data last night. What does the man mean? Number four. This doesn't look at all familiar. We must be lost. We'd better get some directions. Let's pull in here. While I'm filling the tank, you can ask for directions. Where will the man and woman go for assistance? Number five. May I speak to Jason Daniels, please? Nobody by that name works here. What does the woman mean? Number six. Kelly, you look tired. I am. I've been working on the budget report for the Finance Committee for three days and nights. Why does the woman say she's tired? Number seven. John, how are you? I heard you were sick. They must have confused me with somebody else. I've never felt better. How does the man say he feels? Number eight. I'd like to buy this table, but I'm $20 short. I'll lend you the money if you can pay me back by Friday. Can the man buy the table? Number 9. Has Dave returned from Europe yet? Yes, but he was here for only three days before his company sent him to Canada. Where does the woman say Dave is now? Number 10. Have you seen Anne Marie in the past 15 minutes? She went to the gas station to have her tank filled. What does the woman say about Anne Marie?
Number 11. George and Jeff were not at the meeting. They would have come if they had known about it. What does the man say about George and Jeff? Number 12. Are the test results posted yet? Yes, most of the students scored 80% and above, but Michael is the exception. What does the man imply about Michael? Number 13. Have they found out who took the answer sheets? The humanities professor asked the dean to question several students. What does the woman mean? Number 14. I'm afraid I'll have to work late again tomorrow night. Why don't you ask for some extra help? What does the woman suggest the man do? Number 15. If Henry hadn't had so much work to do, he would have come to the concert with us. It's too bad he missed such a great show. What do the speakers say about Henry? Number 16. Did James return the books to the library? No, he had them renewed. What does the woman say about James? Number 17. Has Harry stopped smoking yet? He is afraid he'll gain weight. What do the speakers say about Harry? Number 18. Does Jonathan spend much time studying? He hasn't studied in weeks, but he'll do well. What does the woman imply about Jonathan? Number 19. How was your meal at the banquet? My meat was so tough I could hardly cut it. What does the man say about his experience at the banquet? Number 20. Where could Rick be? He must have forgotten about our meeting. What does the woman say about Rick? Number 21. What's in that bag over there? I bought some apples, peaches, pears, and grapes. What is the woman talking about? Number 22. Where did Joe and Nancy go for their honeymoon? They were going to go to Puerto Rico, but they couldn't afford it, so they went to St. Augustine instead for one week. What does the man say about the couple's honeymoon? Number 23. 
Number 23. Did you know that the hot dog did not originate in the United States, but in Germany? Yes, and they've even had something similar to it in Finland. It's made out of reindeer meat. Which of the following is not true about the hot dog? Number 24. You ought to take it easy for a few days. I have no time to spare. What problem does the man have? Number 25. Tiffany is already walking, but Stephanie isn't. Tiffany was born before Stephanie was. What does the woman say about Tiffany and Stephanie? Number 26. I am taking my car downtown to be repaired. Be sure you get an estimate. What does the woman advise the man? Number 27. Why did Professor Nelson get angry with Jane? She should have worked on her paper last night, but she watched TV instead. What does the man say about Jane? Number 28. Franklin focused on the deer and snapped the shutter. What a great shot. What are the speakers talking about? Number 29. I need to complete my paper this weekend. If I were you, I'd have it typed by a service. What does the man suggest the woman do? Number 30. I hear Yolanda ran into Anna downtown last week. I haven't seen either of them for months. What does the man mean? This is the end of Part A. Go on to Part B. Now read along with me as I read the directions for Part B. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part B. Directions. In this part, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34 are based on the following conversation. Did you see that TV program last night about the skydiver whose parachutes didn't open after he had jumped from his plane? No, I didn't. Did he die? No. It's really unbelievable how he could have survived such a freefall, much less lived to tell about it on television. What happened? Neither of his chutes opened as he plummeted to the ground. When they found him, they thought he was dead. Doctors said he'd never walk again, but he proved them wrong. How long was he recuperating? He spent 18 months in the hospital while his broken bones were mending. 
He was no sooner discharged than he jumped out of a plane again. Gee, some people sure do crazy things. Number 31. Why was the man in the hospital? Number 32. Where did the interview take place? Number 33. What caused the man's accident? Number 34. What did the man do soon after he was released from the hospital? Questions 35 through 38 are based on the following conversation. What's the matter? I can't sleep lying down. I feel a lot of pressure in my chest. Well, there is some congestion. I want to do some tests. How soon will I get the results? Oh, you'll have the results before you leave the office, and I'll prescribe some antibiotics that I believe will help you. Number 35. What is the probable relationship between these two speakers? Number 36. When will the woman receive the results of the tests? Number 37. What does the man think will help the woman? Number 38. What is the woman's problem? Questions 39 through 42 are based on the following news story. Two men and a 13-year-old boy are safe now after being rescued from their tiny boat, which had been adrift in the Gulf of Mexico for 24 hours. After their families had reported them missing, the Coast Guard began searching, but the group was rescued after waving frantically at a private airplane flying overhead. It turned out that they had drifted only seven and a half miles from where their engine had broken down. Number 39. How many people were in the boat? Number 40. How were the boaters finally rescued? Number 41. Why did the authorities begin to search for the boat? Number 42. How far had the boat drifted? This is the end of Part B. Go on to Part C. Now, read along with me as I read the directions for Part C. Remember, you should not read ahead or turn the pages while the directions for this part are being read. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then on your answer sheet, Find the number of the question 
and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 43 through 45 are based on the following commentary by a doctor to a patient. Mr. Davis, I've just finished reading your x-rays and I would like to discuss them with you. You have osteoarthritis in the middle of your back and scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. I can also feel the muscle spasms and pinched nerves from your shoulders to the base of your spine. While this may sound terrible to you, it is not life-threatening, nor is it something to worry about. At present, there is no cure for these problems, but you can control them with proper treatment. First of all, we need to adjust your diet a little. The nurse will provide you with information on some foods to avoid completely and others whose consumption should be restricted. Here is an explanation of some back exercises that you can do. They will help to stretch and strengthen the muscles and to relieve the pain. Use a heating pad and an ice pack to alleviate soreness in the joints. I'm going to prescribe some muscle relaxers and painkillers. Take them as indicated. In about six weeks, we'll see how you are progressing and then begin some chiropractic treatment. I'd like to see you again in three weeks. Please have the nurse make an appointment for then. Number 43, what is the purpose of this talk? Number 44, what did the speaker do before talking with Mr. Davis? Number 45. According to the speaker, what is scoliosis? Questions 46 through 50 are based on the following talk about Salvador Dali. Ladies and gentlemen, please move in a little closer as we begin our tour this afternoon. Today you will enjoy the largest collection of Salvador Dali's works under one roof. They include several hundred oil paintings, drawings, and watercolors, more than a thousand graphics, and a variety of sculptures as well as jewelry. As you will see, Dali was multi-talented. He designed furniture, created exquisite works with fine jewels, and concocted perfumes with tantalizing aromas. He developed his talents over a span of six decades, leaving an indelible imprint on the world of art. Here we see some of his early paintings, mostly landscapes of the town of his birth, Figueres in Catalonia, Spain, and the seascapes of a neighboring town called Cataques. While these represent a more traditional art form, it was at this time that Dali's controversial career began. He was expelled from a prestigious art school in Madrid because he disagreed with his professors on their techniques. He once threw himself down several flights of steps just to get attention. At the age of 21, he had his first one-man show. Four years later in Paris, he fell madly in love with Gayla Elward, the wife of a French poet. She became his lover and later they married. She was the inspiration and model for many of his works. The discovery of America by Christopher Columbus, his monumental masterpiece, shows Gala appearing on Columbus's banner. She also served as his model for other works, such as the Crucifixion, Ecumenical Council, and Hallucinogenic Toreador. Dolly's themes varied from one period to the next, but many contained recurring images of ants, crutches, limp watches, grasshoppers, and sexual symbols. All of these were in some way a carryover from his childhood and adolescence. He often placed familiar and outrageous imaginary objects side by side. A number of paintings such as Slave Market, Old Age Adolescence Infancy, Hallucinogenic Toreador, and Lincoln and Dolly Vision portrayed double images. Depending on how you look at these works, you can see two entirely different views. Surrealistic paintings are what Dolly is best known for, and in most of them he left everything to the viewer's interpretation. As you wander around on your visit today, Look at the paintings up close, and then move back about 20 feet and ponder them again from that distance. Before leaving, stop at our gift shop to browse and perhaps to purchase some of the Dolly memorabilia, posters, books, clothing, perfume, and postcards. On your next trip to St. Petersburg, 
come back to visit us. We are open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., on Sunday from noon to 5 p.m., and we are closed on Mondays and holidays. Number 46. Who was the speaker? Number 47. Which of the following was not mentioned as a Dolly creation? Number 48. Who was one of Dolly's frequent models? Number 49. What was the artist's most renowned art form? Number 50. What kind of paintings were the artist's earliest? This is the end of the Practice Test 49 Listening Comprehension section. Stop work on Section 1 now.